Hey guys, very quickly, we are going to focus on your gain loser's law. Oh yes, what is it that Jam and Waek they expect us to know very, very quickly? And then this is our lesson one in gain loser's law. Very, very important. But before we go, let me tell you this. There are people that bear foolish names to you. You call it foolish names. Let me put it that way. And they do very well with their life. Right? Some even went ahead to start bearing names like Stone. Others decide to go and bear this name. Imagine somebody give birth to a child and say your child's name is Gay. Gay, Gay, Gay. But you see the guy that bear Gay, he still went ahead and even gave us law in chemistry that we are studying. Follow me. As you look at the gay loser's law together. <laughs> yeah, he's shocked you. His name is gay. <laughs> yeah, let's go. In the loser's law, first, I want you to know that there is what we call the loss of combining volume of gases. Oh, yes. How many scientists look into the loss of combining volume of gases? There are two of them. And the two of them, they lay the foundation, right, for the combining volume of gases. One of them is... Geluzak and Geluzak came up with his Geluzak's law. So this guy you are seeing here, this is our Geluzak. Bro, respect. That's Geluzak for you. And this other guy you are seeing here, right, his name is Avogadro. So it was the one that brought out of his code your Avogadro's law. So we're going to look at Geluzak's law first. Geluzak's law have calculation that Jam will never play with all our egg. And then we're going to solve all of them together. So the first guy is your Geluzak's law, right? Yes. So, okay, can we look at some lovely thing about the loser's law the definition? How do we define the loser's law? Constant exam question. One, two, three. The loser's law of combining volume states that when gases react. So, the first thing I need here is that they must be what? Gases. If they are solid, you are wrong. If they are liquid, you are wrong. All of them must be what? Gases. When gases react, how do they do that? They do so in volumes. There bear a simple ratio to one another when gases react. First thing, they must be gases. They do so in volume. There bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the gaseous products. In other words, Gases are reacting together. They do so in volume. They bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the gaseous products. The products that will be formed, they will also be gases. Oh, Sir Peter, give me equation. Let's say, for example, hydrogen gas is reacting with what? Oxygen gas, O2 gas. What are they going to form? They are going to form H2O. This guy as well should be gas. When gases react... Hydrogen and oxygen, they are the reactants, right? They do so in what? Volumes. They bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the gaseous products provided all gaseous volumes. All the gaseous volumes are measured at the same temperature and what? Pressure. In other words, what is the condition? The temperature and pressure must be constant. Ah, follow me. Let me show you something. Want to go? What is your Gelusak's law? Gelusak's law of combining volume states that when gases react, right? How do they do it? They do so in volume that bear a simple ratio to one another. And so the volume of the gaseous products provided all gaseous volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, for the now, I'm going to pause there, but let that definition enter into you. Look at this very quickly. Jump and why question. The powerful question we're giving. The question says, which of the following laws state that gases react in volumes? That bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the gaseous products. Ah, provided all gaseous volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. Who states it? Is it your chance law? Is it your boy's law? Is it your Gelusak's law? Or we can call it Avogadro's law. What is the correct answer? That statement is given by who? Gelusak's. That makes option C the correct answer. What is your Gelusak's law? Everybody, the Gelusak's law of combining volume say that when gases react, ah, they do so in volumes that bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the gaseous products. Provided all the gaseous volumes are 
measured at the same temperature and what pressure. If you get that very fast, let's move on very quickly. What are the bits? The complete series of classes, right? As far as your syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awake. Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons. You have access to your notes. You have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end is directly in the LearnLift app for you. So all you have to do is just map down to Play Store or App Store and download the LearnLift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move. Let's get back to class. Enjoy. What are the examples of reactions that demonstrate the loser law? Follow me from here. Reactions that demonstrate the loser's law. Number one, let's say, for example, one volume of hydrogen is reacting with one volume of chlorine. What will they produce? Two volume of hydrogen chloride gas will be born. Now, what is the reaction for this? It's very simple. What happens there is that when hydrogen, right, gas, go and react with your chlorine gas. And you know that hydrogen is diatomic, so it is H2. H2 gas plus Cl2 gas, what is it going to form? It's going to form hydrogen chloride, and that is your HCl gas as well. But here will be two in front of this. That's the balanced chemical equation there. Because you have two atoms of hydrogen here, two atoms of hydrogen here, two atoms of chlorine here, two atoms of what chlorine here. Very simple, easy and direct. So one volume of hydrogen gas, we always react with one volume of chlorine to produce two volume of what? Hydrogen chloride. That's number one. Number two thing I like you to notice this. One volume of nitrogen gas. So I need nitrogen and two gas, right? We combine with three volumes of my hydrogen gas if they combine well what, what is it going to form it's going to form ammonia ammonia there is nh3 right how many volumes of ammonia will be formed two volumes of ammonia will be formed gas check now everything is also balanced nitrogen is two here yeah. how many nitrogen here yeah. two hydrogen is six how many hydrogen here yeah. three times two that's how many six balanced you're out of there ha <laughs> hi let's go the third one there is carbon bonds in one volume of oxygen when carbon come and born in oxygen carbon one volume carbon right this guy is solid listen solid is coming to born in oxygen gas what is it going to give me at the end of the day it's going to give me nothing but your what your co2 gas that's what i'm going to have there and how many carbon here one how many carbon here one how many of it here two how many of it here two that's what we're going to have there. But please, I have a problem. This carbon here is what? Solid. This is gas. This is gas. What is it that we should look out for? The loser said that, please, let them be what? Gases. Does it make sense? So, in case they give you an exact question, which of the following is not in alliance with your loser law? Check the ones that are not solid, uh, that are not gases. That becomes the answer. Because the loser law is supporting what? Gases. If you get that very fast with me, another thing I like you to note is this. Please note this with me very fast. Number one, chemical calculations that are based on the Luzak's law. What do they involve? They involve gas volume to gas volume relationship. In other words, the Luzak law is all about what? Gases, 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 gases. So gas volume to gas volume relationship. That is what the Luzak's law involves. Are you getting it now? The ones that will now involve gas to another thing is a different thing entirely. They are not under the loser. To get that, please, three powerful things to always remember the loser for. Three things, if you must solve the loser's calculations that we are going to be entering soon and look at all the German wire question, there are three things to always remember. Number one, excess reactants. Ah, excess reactants, are Peter. Number two, limiting reactants. Number three, balanced chemical equation these are the three things that your can lose a claw right upon excess reactant limited reactant balanced chemical equation excess reactant limited reactant balanced chemical and um, balanced chemical equation which one is excess reactant how do i know that the reactant is in that is in excess very simple the reactant that remains after a chemical reaction has gone to completion, what is that reactant called? Excess reactant. 
let's say you are cooking rice right your mom asked you to boil rice cook rice for us and then they gave you um five cups of rice to cook the whole of it and then they gave you five sachets of salt now the question is this are you going to use the entire five cup of rice they say cook you five cup of rice normally you are going to use it right but are you going to use the five sachets of salt that they have given to you no meaning that salt there is the excess reactants the reason why you are not go- the reason why you're not going to use the whole of that salt is because the rice you are using is five cups small i wish it's like 50 cups of rice 100 cup of rice it's possible that you can exhaust the whole salt and you will need more salt so you see what now is that and um, that for the five cup of rice you are dealing with that five cup of rice is the is the limiting reactant the five packs of salt is the excess reactant so what is excess reactant excess reactant is that reactant that remain after a chemical reaction has gone into completion so when that chemical reaction has gone into completion what you have left is the excess reactant why because it is greater than necessary quantity right to completely react with the limiting reactants the reason why you are going to stop that reaction process is because your limiting reactant is exhausted your excess reactant has not yet what exhausted have you not observed it so that if you are cooking soup and you go and buy ingredients in the market it's not everything you buy in the market you end up using there are some that you finish you are going to use as you are cooking the soup there are some that you're not going to finish those ones that you're not finished they are excess reactants those ones that you have finished using they are the limiting reactant. The reason why they do not use that excess reactant is because the limiting reactant has exhausted. Another thing you must know about excess reactant is that it is the gas that remains unreacted because its volume exceeds the stoichiometric required sets by the balanced words equation. As we move on, I think there are three things limit excess reactant, limiting reactant, and the balanced chemical equation. The balanced chemical equation is a stoichiometric equation. The second thing to note is the limiting reactant. Very quickly, what is the limiting reactant? Simple. The reactant that is entirely consumed first. The one that you finish first. In a chemical reaction, thus determining the maximum amount of product that can be formed is called the limiting reactant. Listen, the reactant you finish first, what is it? Limiting reactant. The reactant you finish first. What is it? Limiting reactant. Another thing about limiting reactant is that in a reaction that involves gases. Now listen carefully. Listen, listen. The limiting reactant is the gas whose initial volume when compared to the stoichiometric ratio is insufficient to fully react with the other gases. Oh, listen. As we move, it is when I'm summing calculations I'll be drawing your attention to the limiting reactants. You are going to be seeing them and identifying them and excess reactants very well. But please don't forget that the limiting reactant is what limits the amount of the products. What limits the product is the limiting reactant. What will tell us the, ama- the maximum amount of product that can be formed? What is it? Limiting reactant. So what limit the product that can be formed is the limiting reactant. And it also determines the extent of the reaction. What determines the essence to which reaction can go? Limiting reactant. Because once limiting reactant is exhausted, that reaction has been completed. Please don't forget this. Balanced chemical equation is the third. And that's what we also call your stoichiometric equation, right? So a chemical equation in which the number of atoms for each element is the same on both the reactant and the product side, thus ensuring the conservation of mass. That kind of equation is called your balanced chemical equation. So your balanced chemical equation is an equation that obey the law of conservation of what? Mass. Very simple. And I'd like you to also not forget this. That for gaseous reactants, what happened there? For in the gaseous reaction, a balanced chemical equation in a gaseous reaction, are you getting it now? Does not only represent conservation of mass, no. It also provides the information to us about the volume ratios of the reacting gases and products, and it is ensuring that they are in alliance with your Gay Lussac's law of what's combining volume.
If you get this very fast with me, please look at this. For example, let's say a reaction that involves the formation of water. How is water formed very fast? In a balanced chemical equation for water, because when they just tell you that hydrogen is combining with oxygen, only you know that hydrogen is diatomic. Oxygen is diatomic. What will they come and form? They will form water, H2O, right? Water is formed. Only you now go and balance it. How many hydrogen is here? Two. How many hydrogen is here? Two. Balance. Oxygen here is one. Oxygen here is how many? Oxygen here is two. Oxygen here is how many? One. At the product side is one. Add two in front here. Oxygen is balanced. Oxygen is balanced here. But hydrogen is now four. Come and add two here. Hydrogen is now what? Balanced. Only you will balance it. That's why I say that, for example, the reaction that involves hydrogen plus oxygen to come and form water, the balanced chemical equation will show you that you need two volumes of hydrogen. These two in front here yeah, is telling us that two volumes of hydrogen is what we need to react with one volume of oxygen. There's nothing in front of oxygen. There is invisible one there. Yeah, one volume of oxygen. To go and produce two volumes of what? Hydrogen. If you get this and you understand limiting reactant, excess reactant, and a balanced chemical equation, guess what? The next class is here on one we'll focus on jam pass questions as well as why pass questions that involve you the Luzak's law of combining volume. Inside there, there are a lot of calculations I'm going to be taking for you, and I'll see you in the next class. Enjoy. Bye bye. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the Learn Lift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye bye.